Good morning. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and um, another Tech Tuesday. Well, Tech Tuesday is now in full progress uh, and let's see what happens. And of course, this time we have a new system going on or we have a new problem going on with the Land Rover. The Land Rover today is going to be changed because it's got pneumatic uh, suspension and I think I have a small leak on there. It's been going on for a little while. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. When it gets cold or hot, it actually comes on or off and so forth. Uh, today, there's been nothing going on but there must be something that actually happens well let's go and have a look at the uh, front suspension valve we're gonna take it apart have a look at it and see if we can find the leaks in there if there is any so uh, stay tuned well having a land rover is always fun now this is the very early start in the morning i haven't started yet it's completely cold you can see the dew is still actually out here on the windows and uh, now it's been sitting overnight and it's a little bit interesting to see what's going to happen with the pneumatic system here in a second if I don't mistake it wrong, I might have had a leak for a little bit of a while now and it will occur once in a while when it gets cold outside and it's been standing for more than six, eight hours. And I'm actually mistaking, actually uh, suspicion is going to the forward suspension valve at the moment. But I haven't elevated it up yet and I haven't measured the um, distance in the fenders towards the axle heights and all that stuff as well. But uh, I don't think I need to because we will see it in a second. Now it's cold and let's see what happens when I go ahead and start it up. Um, because it might be a little bit different. Let's go have a look. I just started it and I can hear the compressor is running at the moment so it was low on uh, air so with a little bit there it is the sign came on suspension fault and the sign over here looks like the uh, don't come knocking when uh, this is rocking that's how it looks like it looks like this uh, came on and it probably is because <clears throat> the car timed out with the uh, compressor running for too long without being able to build up the proper pressure in the system. So if I leave it here and elevate it, for example, up to the highest uh, suspension point, if I elevate up there and bring it back down again and turn the car off and turn it back on again, most likely this light will be gone. And um, so therefore stay tuned and uh, we'll take care of this problem right now. I don't know if we're going to change the suspension valve or we're going to go ahead and see if we're going to renovate it. Uh, if it can be renovated, I'll probably try that first so we can do both actually at some point. But if it's going to run for next year or whatever with a renovation with new O-rings inside the valve or a suspension valve, I think we'll start from there. So uh, please stay tuned, hit the like subscribe button and um, let's see where this takes us. I've just elevated the car to full extent on the suspension. Let's see what happens when we start it up again. Here we go. It's in progress. Still running. But what I'll do is I'll put it back down to normal driving height. So let's take it here. Suspension and normal height selected. And it's gone back down. And I guarantee you now it'll work absolutely just perfect. And this is basically uh, the indication of a small leak in the system. Um, had it been 100% correct, there would be absolutely nothing going on uh, when you start up in the morning and you shouldn't be able to see it. This leak here is not so big that I can see it's actually, let's say, leaving the front end or the rear end down or one side down and one strut down or whatever. And I just changed all the struts uh, about a year ago. So I don't actually expect that's the case. I have more, I'm more susceptible to think that it might be the uh, front suspension valve in this case, because they do, they are kind of weak after all these years. So uh, we'll see it, but you see, no uh, suspension sign coming on after this. So this is one of the clues to go and have a look for a very small leak. And we'll probably go ahead and do that with a little bit of soapy water and it will actually go ahead and show me, um, we'll bleed the system, but we'll use soapy water and then we'll see some bubbles coming out where the leak is actually present. So uh, stay tuned. Now let's find out if it's actually one or the others. There are three suspension valves on here. The one in the front, it actually takes care of the whole front end. I've elevated this up on its maximum right now and normally you'll go ahead and let it sit for 48 hours or even more if you can measure the distance from here to the um, top bolt down there or just to the tire whatever if you like and the same thing on the other side and then write them down on a piece of paper and after 
a certain amount of period, let's say, or for 48 hours or even more than that, you can see if it's actually lowering, losing the pressure in the front, or it's going to be down in the back. You do both in this case. That way you can determine whether it's the front or the aft. I've been paying attention to mine every time I came out in the morning that it's actually coming up slightly in the front. And uh, that's why I'm believing that it might be the front suspension now that I have to have a look at. So uh, let's go ahead and try that. First, turn the wheel all the way over. You can elevate up and put it off. I'm not going to do that. The valve is actually located right up here. And it's quite easy to go ahead and take that inner liner off and then get to it. Even though you don't take the whole thing off, you can still get to it anyway. So uh, that's what we're going to try right now. Before we get that far, we'll go ahead and pop the hood as usual. And uh, the reason why we do that is because I need to go down here and find the relay. Uh, or if you want to take the circuit breaker, I like to, I prefer to take the relay that elevates, uh, that controls the compressor. And also the elevation, the automatic elevation, so it doesn't suddenly... Uh, deflate on you and come down on the stomach and then you'll have no space in the fender basically to work on so uh, for security and safety you can also go ahead and take the um, the battery completely off that will also work but I'll just go ahead and take the relay first so here I just popped the cover for the relay and the battery um, relays are here in the top here you can actually see you got a relay called r7 that's for the elevation right there so uh, we'll go up and take that off it's the one up here as soon as you take that one out it's going to be safe to work on the pneumatic system so that's what we're going to do next as an extra precaution there are also two fuses if you want there's one up here it's a 5 amp that can come off and then you're also got one down here which is the top one over here. And of course we get the police coming by as soon as we start talking. But this one will take care of that too. So here you got another one. We'll take that up. And I'll go ahead, I need both my hands in this case, but basically by taking these two out, you're definitely disconnected from all the, um, the different um, pneumatic systems that's on the airplane. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> on, the, on the car. So there's like a few screws that you need to take out there in here as well and these gonna pop out automatically and then once you take that off the liner can come nice and dandy back. So here we are. Uh, let me show you where that valve is and how it looks like. As you come in underneath the uh, front fender you can actually just remove a few of the screws and there you go. This is how it looks like and uh, that's the valve. Suspension valve. That's the one that needs maybe a little bit of repair and uh, can have a leak in all the different valves inside of it you'll see that uh, these are different pistons going up and down that's the shuttles that goes back and forth and that's what gets worn out as well so uh, let's go ahead and get that one out and see how it looks like the way it comes off is actually just to uh, push it upwards and then it should come off i haven't disconnected mine yet but i'll show you there you go you push it up and you pull it out and it's actually hanging these three in there and that's basically how the whole valve is coming off the assembly um, so now i'll just go ahead and disconnect these and disconnect the whole thing before you disconnect the air on there make sure you take a jack and put it underneath or even block it up that's even better uh, i'm just going to take a jack this time and then we're going to have a look at it i've just loosened one of the knots there as soon as you hear the hissing sound, just let the uh, air bleed off slowly so it doesn't explode in your face or have any other things come up. So just give it a bit of time for the air to bleed out. That should be fine. Take a picture of it before you take it all apart. I'm just taking the air off right now on one side and you have these two over here too. See the marked one is actually with a white there in the middle. That's the bottom part. So uh, be aware when you take that out that you do it correctly as well. So here's the valve out. This is uh, one of the wheels. I believe this is the front left. And uh, got a supply in here, one or the other, and the other one goes to the other wheel. And this is how it looks like. So um, I would uh, probably think that supply is probably on the top one in this case up here, but I'll see in a second. There are some torques on the top that we can take off. As soon as we get that off, we get into the pistons that are sitting in there, and then we can clean out this valve and see if there's anything wrong with it. So let's try that. So here we are on the uh, workbench. This is actually Torx, and the Torx is a Torx 20. Fits right in, and you can just go ahead and take them off. I'll do it in a crisscross pattern as good as I can, so you don't get into uh, different tension. Make sure they're all loose before you 
take it all apart. There we go. Now we can go ahead and release the rest of them. So here we are on the test bench. As you can see, I've just taken this apart. It actually uh, is put together with uh, four uh, T, uh, TX20 torque, basically, uh, screws. And in here, uh, when you go ahead and get it all taken apart, really be sure to pay attention to what's going on on the outside because if you see some other colorings it could be two things um, if you have some of the debris in the air system that might come in and it has a little bit of a white ish color to it it could be one of these o-rings that are actually located here on the top uh, or uh, they're also put in here around the valves which is sitting straight in there as well that might be leaking could be now um if it's only one of those, then it will be either side that's gonna go ahead and deflate on you. If it's the one that has supply, then it will be both of them. So um, in my case here, I'm just uh, gonna change the O-rings to some other O-rings to see if it actually works, um, <clears throat> just to make sure. A little bit thicker ones, these are the ones that were in there and uh, I think they have been worn out over the years. So I'm gonna change that as a maintenance. Um, if you buy a complete set on Amazon or wherever you want to buy them in, does it doesn't really matter. Then these are the valves that fits in straight in here as well. So there is a small O-ring down there you need to replace. And actually in here there's an even smaller one that needs to be replaced as well. This is the O-ring that I'm talking about. That's how small this thing is. Very, very small sitting there. Um, and that of course in turn fits straight into the uh, valve itself like such so um, make sure you change them all if you start up on them and then also what I'm using is I use a few cotton sticks to clean out everything inside of it including this as well uh, I'm gonna give this a, a small overhaul and see if that's going to take care of my problem and if it does then it's gonna be running for a little while again and um, nevertheless I'll know if I need to replace the whole valve unit if I need to but anyway let's try this out first and see what happens what I'm using here to uh, clean these is actually a mass airflow sensor. Um, it's evaporating and it does not um, infringe the uh, gaskets that goes in here as well and the O-rings as well. Or why you might find something that's going to be swollen up. Once you have it completely clean, at that moment you're ready to put in the valves slowly again and mount the last O-rings and then you can assemble the whole assembly. So uh, let's do that. Had to switch camera but that was mainly due to uh, the SD card was full whenever you tighten these back up again make sure you do it with your hands first before you do anything else because otherwise you might actually destroy something so just take your time make sure this is actually going in correctly and you should be just fine so take your time with that and you'll be okay and start from the inside and move outwards inside and move outwards reason being you want to make sure it pushes correctly onto the uh, o-rings that you just put in so let's do it one more time inside and outwards make sure you don't tighten it too much but tighten it just enough so it's gonna work beautiful um, so you don't know what tighten this is actually plastic so the screws go into a plastic carry right there it's actually plastic so make sure that this is not going to be over screwed so you over tighten it and you have to go ahead and buy a new one. This is now ready to go onto the Land Rover. Let's go out and put it back in. So going back into underneath the Land Rover. Now we just need to clean the tubings or basically attachments there. As you can see they're also a little bit dirty. So let's clean them up and uh, then assemble the whole thing again. So now the whole suspension valve is now back in place as you can see. All is actually ready and tight and cleaned up let's see if it works 
and now to the tech tip of the week how to get to it easy without taking the wheels off and all that stuff well open up the inner liner like this put in if you have the right tools uh, especially the ratchets like this where you can actually open both of they're actually meant to be for pipes they're open in one end as you can see here put it in between open it up and you can actually right away get to your valve which is located right up there just an easy way just a fifth and uh it's one of the tips and tricks that makes it easier for you to work on so uh now it's ready to go let's go out and see if it works so here we go everything goes back in again and uh Make sure you put them in correctly. There we go. There we are. And then just assemble the whole thing in reverse order. Take it off the jack after that. And uh, then we're gonna start it up. It's actually pumping it up very nice and good. And the compressor stopped as well as it came up. Let's see. It's running now, but let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh sorry, we got to go ahead and, there you go. He's running. Okay, it's pumping. Beautiful. First the back, then the front, because of the lights. It's now fully extended. Let's just have a look on the other side. That's fully extended too. No sounds. I think it's okay. And then let's see <laughs> If I can actually manage to get in there. came all the way down so I think it works now let's go out and have a look and see I have a go for a drive and see what happens just been out for a test ride it works very beautiful the uh, don't come knocking if this sign is rocking it is off everything is working beautiful and uh, the suspension is actually working absolutely as supposed to going on high low and uh, good clearances individual balance as well so all in all few new o-rings in that front uh, suspension valve that worked out well uh, so let's see how it goes over the next uh, many weeks and uh, we can always buy a new one put in it only takes about an hour to fix it and that's about it so uh, I hope somebody else is gonna be inspired to go out and try it themselves make sure you got clean tools and that's it the um, tools you're gonna need will probably most likely be cutting sticks say torque 20 you'll need um, a few ratchets uh, number 12 if you're doing metric and about a half inch when it's like uh, imperial and uh, then you're actually more or less done after that so it just takes a bit of work and a little bit of effort to go ahead and clean it up and uh, assemble it again take your time with it don't rush it and if something doesn't feel right it probably isn't so stop what you're doing look back go a step back and then try it all over again and you'll be fine hope you enjoyed it like the uh I'll hit the like and subscribe button and I'll come back with another video as soon as I can. That was the Tech Tuesday for this time.